Hello. Welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. I'm coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, part of OU Health. Our program today uh, is uh, a uh, look into um, a little bit uh, on the esoteric side of things, uh, but uh, an a tumor that uh, crosses uh, numerous uh, organ systems and uh, a clinical settings, so certainly one that uh, we can encounter in a wide variety of uh, scenarios. Uh, in my case, so it came across the GYN pathology service uh, in the form of a 32-year-old woman who uh, postpartum was having a tubal ligation and was discovered to have what looked like a fibroid attached to the tube um, at the time of uh, tubal ligation. Um, it wasn't very big, a few centimeters in size, and so the entire uh, thing was submitted. It was found to be a spindle cell lesion and uh, thought, therefore, uh, you know, right off the bat, well, maybe this is just an edematous uh, smooth muscle tumor that's uh, pedunculated from the uh, fallopian tube or adnexi. Of course, we know there are other spindle cell lesions that can occur in the uh, uh, pelvis. Um, and so I thought it would be good to just sort of put together a list of things that uh, you might encounter. Uh, we've certainly seen fibromatosis, uh, GI stromal tumors occasionally in the pelvis. And uh, in older patients, oftentimes a dedifferentiated liposarcoma involving the mesentery or retroperitoneum can present. Of course, we have Mullerian sarcomas, both adenosarcoma and uh, uh, mixed Mullerian uh, uh, sarcoma or car carcinosarcoma. Uh, sclerosing mesenteritis occasionally can present as a mesenteric mass and uh, potentially could involve the pel pelvis. Inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor is one of those tumors that can involve the bowel, uh, but it's also increasingly uh, found in the GYN tract on occasion, as well as multiple other sites. Mesothelioma can have a sarcomatoid appearance, uh, although usually it's quite diffuse rather than a localized single lesion. And then synovial sarcoma and other uh, much less common lesions uh, would sort of round out the list uh, to be thinking about. So uh, here's our uh, sections of this tumor. As you can see, it's kind of a, a bluish uh, tumor uh, and uh, has variable uh, slightly edematous areas. As we come into higher power, it's quite uniform. There's not a lot of pleomorphism to these cells. Uh, we do see a few uh, foci of maybe uh, clusters of inflammation or staining variability. And as we uh, come down to higher magnification, we see that these cells are uh, fairly uniform, uh, spindle-shaped cells, somewhat fusiform nuclei, and a scattering of uh, inflammatory cells here uh, amongst the uh, fascicles of smooth muscle tissue. Um, looking at the nuclei, we see they sort of have rounded, uh, more blunted type of ends rather than uh, the, the spindle fusiform ends that you might see with uh, fibromatosis or something like that. Uh, there do appear to be some intervening vessels. Um, and uh, we don't see a lot in the way of uh, mitotic activity uh, here. Um, so it's uh, fairly sort of uh, nondescript in that sense. Um, and this is essentially what the entire uh, lesion looked like. Um, we have another section of it we can uh, take a look at as well. Uh, here we see a little bit more of an edematous uh, pattern, uh, less cellular. Um, uh, but again, the same sort of uh, monotonous, uh, fasciculated growth of uh, these uh, fairly bland uh, uh, cells, pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. Here's a little bit more rounded view of some of the nuclei, and maybe a few scattered um, lymphocytes and so forth. So this uh, presents, uh, obviously, a, uh, a broad differential, thinking about the things we've just talked about could be GI stromal tumor, uh, could be a soft tissue uh, tumor, um, could be a uh, fibromatosis, although as we've indicated, the nuclei are not uh, great for that. Uh, and certainly uh, lyomyoma would be in our differential uh, considerations. 
this actually was a referral case. And so it came uh, with a couple of uh, immunohistochemical stains, but I thought it might be good to just uh, review sort of where the utility of these uh, lesions lie and some of the things that might be uh, useful in differentiating them. So uh, GI stromal tumors, of course, we think of them as being positive with CD1117 or DOG1, CD34 on occasion. Uh, but note also that some uh, fibromatoses and some Eulerian tumors can occasionally also have positivity for these stains. Lyomyos, uh, uh, smooth muscle tumors, either lyomyoma or lyomyosarcoma, of course, are going to be positive with actin and desmin. But notice that many of the other elements on here can have um, uh, positive staining, such as uh, Mullerian adenosarcomas, sclerosing mes mesenteritis can have some positivity, uh, as can uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Beta catenin is usually fairly specific for fibr fibromatosis, uh, but uh, may also occasionally be seen in dedifferentiated li liposarcoma, although usually that's uh, cytoplasmic. Um, ALK, another stain we often think of more frequently with inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, but also can occasionally be positive with dedifferentiated liposarcoma. Now, of course, in that setting, you'd like to see uh, um, adjacent, uh, well-differentiated uh, fatty tumor uh, as well. Uh, but this gives you an idea of kind of the range of things uh, and the specificities in this differential for certain of the uh, uh, immunohistochemical choices that might be uh, utilized. So in our particular case, uh, the uh, referring laboratory performed uh, uh, this uh, stain for Desmond. As you see here, we have quite a bit of Desmond, but it's not uniformly strongly positive like here in the control tissue on the right. So this is some Desmond positivity, but not uh, uh, convincing. Uh, we also did some uh, um, well, I'm not sure what the control is here. Um, oh, I think this is uh, this is uh, beta catenin, and we're just seeing a positive uh, cytoplasmic staining. We're not seeing uh, the uh, um, nuclear staining. Uh, and then uh, one additional uh, stain. Uh, was uh, actin, which just showed a few positive uh, cells here and there, a few of the blood vessels and so forth. So they didn't do all of the stains necessary. Uh, a referral uh, laboratory performed an ALK, found that to be positive, found Caldesmon to be uh, negative, um, and arrived therefore at the diagnosis of inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Now, as I've mentioned, this is uh, most commonly seen in other sites, such as the lung, the head and neck, uh, occasionally in the GI tract where it's usually extramural um, and increasingly has been seen in the GYN tract, but can also be seen in skin and other sites. These are difficult tumors to predict behavior. Uh, some of them recur or metastasize and therefore uh, under the WHO, it's classified as kind of an intermediate grade uh, malignancy. Recently, uh, we've begun to discover that uh, most of these tumors have some tyrosine kinase receptor gene rearrangement but that can be on a, with a variety of, uh, uh, of genes. So uh, ALK is the most frequently uh, seen, but ROS1, PDGFR beta, RET, NTREC1 and 3, and IGFR1 also can be uh, various partners. Now, the tumors that have been reported in, uh, women, in, the, uh, in, in women in the GYN tract generally have uh, had their uh, outcomes correlated according to size, age of the patient, presence of necrosis, invasion, uh, mitotic index, and atypia, uh, generally predicting more uh, severe behavior. But it uh, seems to be that this is a lesion that also has a particular association in pregnant patients where the lesions tend to be small and are often incidentally discovered uh, and therefore might be expected to have a favorable outcome just on the basis of size and younger age. Uh, but uh, also of note, they seem to have a uh, fairly restricted range of uh, fusion partners with ALK, TAMP3 and THBS1 uh, as the most uh, frequently encountered. Um, and in some series, series, virtually all of the, the cases had these uh, uh, fusion partners. 
Uh, and uh, in the limited studies in pregnant patients, uh, these have all had a favorable outcome. Although again, still the numbers are quite uh, low at present. Well, I thought it would be just interesting to compare a similar lesions seen in other locations. Uh, so this is a, an inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor from uh, the head and neck area. We've got some tissue biopsy here. And again, you see this uh, pattern of uh, spindle-shaped cells, not very inflammatory, uh, but very loose uh, spindle-shaped cells, not very pleomorphic. Uh, moderate amounts of uh, eosinophilic, uh, slightly amphiphilic cytoplasm, and uh, a rather nondescript vascular background. Uh, so that's in, in that location. Here's a tumor in another location. Uh, this um, has a little bit more cellular appearance. Uh, I think we'll go over here, take a look down here. Um, and uh, this lesion uh, was, I believe, in the uh, uh, GI tract uh, located external to the uh, bowel wall. And here we see a little bit more cellularity, some entrapped smooth muscle, um, and a little bit more of inflammatory background that might raise the suspicion there. Uh, but I think on the basis of our first two cases, the first two examples there, you wouldn't put your hat uh, on the, the necessity of finding a lot of inflammatory cells. Um, and then uh, lastly, a case uh, from the skin. Uh, here you see it, it has an even has a little bit of a florette or collarette type of appearance uh, in this setting. Um, and uh, again, sort of a bland, loosely vascularized structure, uh, not very spindly here, uh, but again, in this situation, the uh, ALK uh, gene, uh, ALK expression was noted and uh, the diagnosis was uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. So several different sites, several slightly variable morphologies uh, for comparison with our case uh, on the index patient. So our final sign out diagnosis uh, is inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor arising in a pregnant patient um, in the uh, immediately, post, uh, immediately post gestational period. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this case and that uh, you'll hit that subscribe button uh, so you'll catch future releases uh, from our channel. Um, and of course, we'd love to hear your comments either directly or post them in the uh, comment section below. Um, and uh, we will uh, be happy to uh, respond uh, as we're able to. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me. See you soon.